Hey everybody, welcome back to Amateur Hour. Uh, this video kind of demos a prototype algorithm for controlling a CNC plasma cutter. I mean, it could be a pin or anything else you wanted it to be, but uh, instead of the normal XY axis, it has one rotary axis and one slide axis. Um, I'll give you some context for that. Last week, Arduino vs. Evil put out a video showing a prototype he was working on that used one rotary and one linear axis to control plasma cutter. Uh, I've got a video link in this card above at the top of the video. Uh, he originally indicated that he might need some help with control algorithms for it, and I was kind of inspired by the project. So I built a simulator to help do the prototyping for those algorithms. Uh, I have a link to that repository in the description below if you, it's something you want to play with. Um, in a video update since, he's indicated that he has the control stuff sorted out, but I still wanted to play with the problem a little bit, and that's what this video is about. So I've got a demo here that cuts out kind of a cattywampusly oriented square. Um, immediately you can see the problem with having a rotary axis, but we'll get back to that. The way the algorithm tries to function is that it takes a start point and a target point, and it imagines a line between them. Then it steps either the linear or the rotational axis um, in an attempt to get closer to the target point. And the way it decides whether or not it's going to take a linear or rotational step is it calculates how far away that step puts it away from this imaginary line. And up close you can see that works pretty good, but the farther out you get, and especially out here uh, on the corners where it can't really bring the linear axis to bear in a way that it would like, you get this jaggedy sawtooth pattern. That has to do with uh, the only option that it has is to slide and then immediately uh, the sliding becomes less beneficial, so it's forced to rotate over. Now, the way to fix this is uh, you have to increase the rotational resolution of this thing. And right now, this is assuming half steps. So if we even uh, cut that in half again to quarter steps, we get a significant increase in performance. Um, but, you know, you lose some torque, and depending on what you're trying to cut or torch or you know, draw, um, that torque may or may not matter to you. Uh, you could also gear the stepper motor so that, you know, you could, you could hold the torque or even increase the torque um, while also increasing the resolution. And you can see here that it, at a um, quarter step, you know, we get, we get something that's starting to become usable. And this distance isn't a joke. I think this the simulation's running out. Yeah, I mean, that's 30 inches away. So from the axis to that corner is 30 inches. So, you know, we're dealing with a pretty big area here, and, and it's handling it fairly well. Uh, but, you know, you can't ignore this this kind of sawtooth thing. If it, it depends on the use case, but you get the point. So just a quick kind of run-through of the algorithm. Um, I've got some helper functions here, things to determine the distance between two points, to determine the distance of a point to a line, polar and Cartesian conversions. So then we get to the bulk of the algorithm, which is this traverse function. And what it does is it takes a start point and a target point and then computes how you need to move the stepper motors in order to get between the two. Um, I'm going to just kind of breeze over this. If you're really interested in it, you know, you can pull down the source code, um, as mentioned earlier in the video, and have a peek. But basically, the first thing it's going to do is decide which movement possibilities are even applicable based on the radius and the theta. So that, that's polar coordinate speak for what the angle of my point is and what the distance of my point is. So if I'm going from this point to this point, I wouldn't decrease my angle and go this direction. So I can immediately discard that as an option. I can also say that this point is farther away from the axis than this point. So I, I won't be contracting the linear axis. So I can immediately discard that option. And it basically takes 
first the extension contraction idea and calculates you know the distance off the line that that action results in and then it does the same thing through a rotational axis and uh, decides which action it's going to take in the process of that. So then down here we read the action that was decided on and we take that action. Um, eventually we run out of actions where we've basically we've gotten too close to the point to be able to do any good anymore and we break out of this uh, of this control loop. So this is a pretty rough prototype um, and there, there are some bugs with it um, including this little gem. I'm not sure what's up with that. It's trying to traverse from this point out to this point and for some reason it decides to draw an arc through here um, and at first I thought, well, that's probably just the closest that it can get to it, but that slide axis should be enabling it. Um, and then it repeats it up here for no apparent reason. Um, I think it has to do with crossing the line right here. Um, but, you know, it's just one of those things. These test cases are kind of, um, you know, scenarios to let you play with this thing. So uh, it describes some points and then calls the traverse function and that's what's rendering out these demos. Um, I did start looking at speed control, uh, which is something that you do have to take into consideration. The closer that it is to the center of rotation, the more actions it's gonna be able to take per inch. That's due to the resolution involved. So when you start getting uh, out here, you have to start inducing delays in the movement of the cutting tool. Um, and that's not a terribly difficult problem to solve, but you know it, it definitely takes some effort. Um, if anybody needs some information about that, you can let me know and I'll, I'll try to help you out. So here's a cutout that I kind of built up to demonstrate the problem with the rotational axis. Um, you can see this line here, that, that is the rotational step resolution. So um, what that means is that the farther out you get, the bigger the distance between these lines gets. And that, that basically prohibits you from making really fine adjustments far out from the axis. And that's why you have to either gear down the stepper motor or you have to start doing partial steps because you know, these gaps aren't going to be tolerable. You could theoretically oscillate back and forth between the two points while you were um, delaying your action um, in the cut, which is something you have to do the farther away from the center of rotation you are. But, I mean, uh, if you could just afford a gearbox, you know, just buy the bloody gearbox instead of watching this thing rattle like a rattle trap out here. Especially if your cutting tool is heavy, that's going to turn into a shit show. So this is probably about as far as I'm going to take this. Uh, AVE seemed to indicate that he had the problem solved. Um, so, you know, there's not really any need for me to be pushing this towards a production type um, resolution. Um, it was definitely a cool problem to work on, that's for sure. This kind of control is something that I had never really thought about. Um, so it was definitely a, a fun experiment to run. Like I said, uh, you know, you can hit the repo um, that I mentioned earlier if you want to play with this stuff. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me in the issues section on the GitHub for it, or you can uh, leave a question in the comments below. Uh, if you have any alternatives, you know, feel free to drop in a pull request for a branch, and I'll drop it into the repo with uh, everything else. I'm sure this is probably like the least clever way that you could possibly do this. Um, you know, and this code over here especially, this is set up more for human readability than efficiency. Um, I'm trying to make sure that you know, if you were to come into this code, you could actually understand what the hell's going on for the most part. Um, so, you know, if you have anything like that, feel free to put in a pull request, open up an issue, ask a question in the comments. Um, but anyway, uh, I guess that about wraps it up. Thanks for watching.